Hallelujah. How many, of you people, how many of you believe that God has power? How many people believe it? Some people don't believe it. And I'm not surprised. How many people believe that God has power? Can I see your hand? Hallelujah. Faith is your confidence in God's power. That God has power. That he can do anything. That he can do all things. I have been sick before to the point of death. It was, the, it was my faith in God that delivered me. I'm telling you the truth. Not to even the point of death. I came out of my body. My body was on the bed and I was standing. You know what I mean? This is me standing in front of you in the year. Um, in the year 2000. In the year 1996. That was how many years ago now? That was 24 years ago. Practical, face to face, life experience with death. I felt ill. The doctors looked at me and they said, they mentioned the number of my organs. They said, your liver is not functioning anymore. Your kidney has stopped. They told everything. The only thing that was working was my heart, and they were waiting for it to stop. I was there on the sick bed two weeks. As I was there, when people come in, they won't recognize me. My family members will come in and ask, Where is he? I'm looking at them. I could still hear them clearly. Everything was clear to me, but I could not move. So I would look at them from the bed. My eyes would move. And emaciated to the point that they, 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 would not, they could not recognize me. But with, even on that sick bed, my faith was alive. This faith, you need it. It is not a joke. I say it many times, I will say it again. I am here to deliver into your hand what you need for this thing. And it's up to you to take it. Because let me tell you, one day you will leave it and there will be no other person to help you except you. On that day, nobody was there. I was there. The doctors were confused. The senior doctor happened to be a family friend of ours, well experienced. The assistant, one I was assisting him, another doctor, happened to even be my cousin, my first cousin. So their emotions were also involved. But they could not do anything. These are people who knew me from the, from the time I was born. So they were, they were emotional. They didn't know what to do. They would go to their room and be to the pastor, sorry, to the uh, doctor's side, to the corner, and be discussing. Okay. So what should we give him? They would give him this one the last time. They would they even believe that I could get it. Because they thought I was completely unconscious. I was not unconscious. My death was mostly. I should not believe that you are not. That was the reason. You don't need to many scriptures when you are in trouble. Some people, when they are in trouble, they put it on the journey. One, one. It's enough. That's why you must know how to work with it. One day you will need it. One day you will need it. So, quit all this, we are just having fun in church. No, 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 no. The church is the place to be equipped for destiny, for the challenges and the trouble that will come, because they will come. One day, whether it is another is the truth, they will come one day. But your faith must be alive. As I was there on the, on the sick bed, many people should be back. There was no other person apart from me that was sure that I would get out of the bed. No other person. My family members, when they told me that they looked at me, their death was positive and tears. Because everything happened so quickly, everything. I felt ill, and what happened? I left home on, on a Thursday. They brought me back from where I went on Sunday. And by that Sunday, no, Monday morning, and by that Monday morning, everything had gone very bad within four days. So they saw an agile young man leaving the house. One day I will see you later. I'll come, I'll come back on Monday. I left home. And they carried me like that, back on Monday. And it was as I was landing in the house, straight to the hospital for two weeks. They looked at me and said, My life, even there, you see my life every day. It was not a joke. Listen, one of those is after the only thing I could meditate on. In the morning, I, I was just sleeping in the night. I don't know you're in bed, I was just sleeping in the night. So in the night, I was just turning that sleep to back in my mind. Because that was what the Lord gave me when I felt him. He said, No, he said, No, no. You need to modify me. You share this testimony many times. Say, Lord, I believe. But I can't 
condition like this, the condition was getting worse. So I'll be running into my head. I shall leave to prepare the words of God. I shall not die. I shall leave to prepare the words of God. So one of those days in the afternoon, I came out of my room. I went, I was not in control anymore. I could not say this is where I wanted to go, that was where I wanted to go. So that was the first that took me out, took me outside the building. I left my body in the room. And as I was outside the building, I just found myself on a platform, now like this. And that platform was attached, actually the round, but attached to a silver pole, very thick silver pole. I couldn't see where it was coming from from me, but I saw that it went into the clouds. And the platform I was standing on was like, a, like an elevator. And there were two or three other people standing there. I couldn't see their faces. But about three or four of us were there standing. I couldn't see their faces. And we were going into the clouds. You know what I mean? For? And all of a sudden, a strong force pulled me from there and flung me back into the room. And I opened my eyes on the bed. I could never move my hand. Tears crossed. I didn't want to But I had the game clearly. As if there was a man sitting in the room. The game said to me, You shall not. You shall live to the play works of God. Confidence in the word of God. That's faith. Forget about all the technical definitions. I can give all that to you. But I'm giving you the practical definition. Your confidence in the ability of God. In the power of God, your confidence in the promises of God. That when God tells you I will do it, you will do it. Your confidence in the instructions of God. That when God says stand up, go to that place, so so something will happen. It will happen like that. Your confidence. A number of months ago, I taught you how to receive that word from the Lord. How many people are here then? You can go through the room because that's not what I want to teach you. Right now, in this city, I'm teaching, I'm teaching you examples. Of faith. People who have confidence in God, in his ability, in his promises, in his instruction, how they demonstrated that of faith and what happened to God. Once you let out the word of faith, your life can never be the same. I can share with you many testimonies of my life how I have won the faith. Let's go to our text. Even today, we're going to read verses 1 and 2. Then we will then start from there. This the general text from the scriptures. Hebrews 11, verse 1 and 2. They are there, say Amen. Are you still here? They are there, say Amen. amen. So if the only the people on my right are here, if they are still here, say Amen. amen. The people on this day. Are you sure you are here? Are you sure? Okay, you are busy with the scripture. Thank you. That's a good way. Good way to escape my question. Alright. He says, now. Faith is the substance of things so for the evidence of things not seen. That's too good. For my it. For my it. Yeah. The elders did what? Obtain the And then he says, for this was what the ancients were commended for. The fathers of old, it was their confidence in God that they were commended for. It was not their determination, but their confidence in God. Praise God. So we I gave you the introduction last week. I'm not going to do that again this week. But now, today, I want to begin to show you a number of people. Today, I'm going to speak about two people, two key characters in the scriptures that walk with them and what happened after the world with them. Go to verse 7. We're starting from the first verse. By faith. That is, that is our, the title of our seed. By faith. Go to verse 7. We're starting from the bottom down. As we go on, we get to the less bottom down. It says, by faith. What's the name of this man? Yeah. No, say it again. Yeah. By faith, not being one of things not seen as yet, more with fear, prepared an act to the saving of his house, by which he condemned the world and became the head of righteousness, which is by faith. Hallelujah. You might not understand it. How many of us know the story of God? What was the key thing that happened in the days of God? One thing, just in one word, you should say it. Flow, thank you. Flow. And you know, a lot of us just 
they are like, oh, no abuse to that. And when the flood came, the flood did not carry him away again because that's the reason. But you see, it was more than that. There was something behind Noah building the ark. And I'm going to share some of those things with you today for you to understand and take learning also for your life. Hear me, friends. The Bible said Noah did not just build the ark. What moved him? It was by faith he built it. And I'm going to explain to you why. We're going to look at the story of Noah in a minute. But I'm going to explain to you why. Listen, the Bible said by faith Noah he built the ark. Why did God say it was by faith? God said so. Because up until that time, it had never rained before the year. It didn't rain. Go and read the scripture. There is chapter 1 from verse 1 to, sorry, chapter 1 to chapter 5. No rain. What they had at that time was a mist. The mist will come. It will water the ground. I don't know how God did it. But they never used to have rain. Rain for you. Praise the Lord. They never had any flaw. It has never happened. So, when God spoke to Noah and said, Go and build the ark, he said, Ah, for so what? He said, I'm going to bring, bring the rain and flood waters of the earth. He had not seen it before. Am I, am I making sense? Yes, sir. If I tell you that this place is going to be flooded, the road is going to be flooded, can you understand what I'm saying? Why? Talk to me. Thank you, my darling. Because what we have seen it before. Am I making sense to you? Remember the last time Lekki uh, Express was flowing about three years ago? In fact, people were swimming on it. I saw a video of one guy up in front of Civic uh, Tower. He was swimming like this, and people were laughing. A white man came out in front of the uh, Civil of Galeria for the Holy Bill. He was kayaking. You know what they call kayaking? Those small places where you hold a double sided paddle. Paddle from both sides, like, like you're on the road that we drive to work every day. That's God, praise God. So if I say you're going to get flooded, you understand it, you have seen it before. Praise God. Something in your memory box can be, can be picked to say this is God. So this is what Pastor said. Yeah. Listen, in the days of God, he had no point of reference. He had never seen it before. He didn't even know what the name was. So he started building. I'm going to give this thing to the Lord. You know when we read the Bible, we read the Bible. Listen, let me show you this picture. The first time that the Bible mentioned the Lord, the Bible said it was 500 years old. What? They used to live long in those days. And 500 years old, they used to live long in those days. I don't think it would be like this one. 500 years old. They say, oh, and someone says, this one began to this one, and this one began to this one. And at the time God started talking to him and everything, he was 500 years old. And he was still bouncing around. By the time the flood waters came, he was 600 years old. So, God spoke to him. He started building. How long on the average? I don't know the exact words. You two, it's similar arithmetic. On the average, how many years? On the years. So, for years, he was making, he was building an ark. So people come. Now, what are you doing? He said, I'm building an ark. Why? He's going to rain. Rain. What's that? What's so called? <laughs> they say, they, you know they are passing. They say, what's so called? You see, actually, you know, I'm not very sure. I've not seen it before. But see, God spoke to me. He said, God, oh, come on, please. How stupid can you be? God spoke to me that he's going to rain. The rain that we have never seen before. So what will happen when you drink? There will be floods. Mm -hmm. What is so called? And it's when plenty of water is flowing and it's covering everything. Oh, 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 that's stupid. And they will go about their business. Then the following day, when they are passing again, the guy is still there. And you know the man never told you that it was the cabinet. Yeah. So he was not trained for anything. Think of what you are in this place. He was not trained for the job. You know, if you want to, as you are here, let them even give you. And they say, make a chair. 
He invented a capital to make a child. Where he would. How long will it take? And when, talk to me. One or two hours, you invent something. You, you have never done it before. They give you all the How long will it take? Five days, you are still sweating. If by the time you finish the chair, you say we'll be like this. You'll be like, oh, oh, oh. Praise God. People, you, you will fall sick in between. You say, on top of one chair, yes, you are not here for a job. I'm not making sense to you. You are so just stuck in this thing. But no one did not do that. People laughed at him, really put it. Five years, ten years, twenty years, thirty years. He said, they will say, oh, then you are stupid. We've been passing this place for the last two years. It's this same act. Mama told me, John, let's go and enjoy life. He said, if you God said, there will be rain. He said, which God? How did this people do? Was, was it like this or like that? So, because he did not give up. That is what is called faith. He had confidence in the one that spoke to him. Hallelujah. So, out of the three, which one was you know what to do? Ability, instruction, promise. Which one? Instruction. You are very good students. Hallelujah. So now I want to show you how we see my question. Let us just start. Genesis chapter 6, that's 11. I'm going to read 11 to 17. We're starting from verse 11. They received that instruction from the Lord and they followed it. You will then see. It was that his confidence in God, despite that people would have ridiculed him, people would have laughed at him. What he was even chasing after himself, he had never seen it before. It has never happened before. Listen, in this year of abundance, you will receive instructions. Amen. Amen. Because you think your abundance is not going to rain from heaven. You will speak one day and there will be money under your bed. If that will happen, what's that? That's what we need to do. that when God decides to bless you, what, what are you going to receive? Some of you will receive instructions to do things that you have never done before. You will receive instructions to reach out to certain people. That ordinary people would not have wanted to reach out to. Am I making sense to you? If you believe God's instruction and follow it, you will be amazed what will come out of it. These people achieve great things by faith. Now look at the story of Noah. Genesis chapter 6, verse 11. It says, The earth also was what? Corrupt before God in God's sight. The earth was corrupt and the earth was filled with violence. Let's go. And God looked upon the earth, and behold, it was corrupt. For all flesh had corrupted their way upon the earth. Let's go. Let's, let's keep going to 17. And God said unto Noah, Now, this is the beginning. Thank God for the Sunday school. The foundation of faith is what? The word. This man of God said it like many times. You must receive, I taught you this last year. You must receive a specific word from God. So faith is not bravery. Am I making sense to you? You know that they will say something is about to happen, or somebody wants to take it, make a daring move. Say, I get it. I'm moving by faith. Not necessary. That's bravery. Faith is not bravery. Faith is not that you see a difficult situation and you die. I die at that situation. But now you can say, you know, that's not true. In fact, people have died at difficult situations that they have died. <laughs> faith, the foundation of faith, the foundation of faith is when you receive a word from the Lord. When God says, do this. <laughs> Hallelujah. Am I making sense to you? Look at him, don't worry. The preacher is here. When God gives you an instruction, now begin to look at the life of Noah. Noah did not just wake up and say, Well, the way this world is, everything is bad. People are going bad things. God might decide to destroy the world. I will build an army. Was that what happened? Talk to me. Was that what happened? Now, get it. He says, And God said unto Noah, 
The end of all flesh is come. You come. I'm going to describe it to you. For the earth is filled with knowledge through them. And behold, I will destroy them with the earth. Hallelujah. Let's go. Make ye what? An ark of God's own wood. Who gave the instruction? What was the instruction? Make an ark. What kind of ark? Of God's own wood. See, one of the things you will find about God as you move on is that when God wants to give you an instruction, you know we are narrowing down now to instruction. There is God's ability. God's instructions, God's promises. Today, we are looking at a man that will take God's instruction. We are narrowing down to it. Listen, when God gives an instruction, it's always very detailed. You will say, okay, go ahead. You understand what I'm saying? He says, make here an ark. It's not being the kind of wood, of God's own wood. Rules shall thou make in the ark, and shall preach within and without. With each. <laughs> was telling him how to build it. I got it. This is how you build it. Let's go. And this is the fashion which thou shalt make it of. The length of the ark shall be 300 cubits. Can you imagine how detailed God is? The length of the ark shall, shall be 300 cubits. The breadth shall be how many cubits? Some preaching, you know, shall be how many? <laughs> and the height of it shall be 10 cubits. Let's go. A window shall thou make in the How many windows? Hey. How many? Which means that if. I mean, imagine you are going to build a land and you are going to put many animals inside it. Are you going to put one window? Think about it. Hey. But see the wisdom of God. God said. You must know how to follow God. It takes your own common sense of your experience. Many times your experience will pay you. That's why some people say it's always difficult for doctors to experience divine healing. Knowledge, knowledge. Once they have it, they know what to do. Once they explain on this side, so when you say you give in Jesus' name, they say, yeah. but you know, my, they will mention all the blood, but they say the blood vessel in that place is ruptured. I can feel it. There is an inflammation of the other people in all these things. Praise God. I'm not against medicine. Very good people are smiling. I'm not against medicine. But I'm saying, the way God operates, um, when it comes to the matter of faith, allow God to be with God. Praise God. He says, A window shall thou make to the earth, and in a cubit shall thou finish it above. Just one cubit. And the door of the earth shall thou set on the side thereof. Don't put it at the bottom. Don't put it at the top. Where should you put the door? And see how detailed God is. Thereof, with your second and third story, shall thou make it. How many people have read this place in such detail? I'm sure not a lot of people. So, how many stories do you give? What they are? Look at it. Right here. Three. There is the ground floor, there is the third floor, second floor. Of course, there will be a first floor. But there will be three, three story buildings. That's how you make it. That's how beautiful God is. That's everything. I'm going to stop. Yeah. He says, and behold, I, even I, do bring a flood of waters upon the earth to destroy all flesh. Where is the breath of man from under every and everything that is in it? That is the earth shall die. Go. Maybe I'll say this. Go. Now, he says, but within will I establish my covenant. What is this one now? Ah, you are a very good student. The instruction came. What followed the instruction? He says, once you follow this instruction, there is a promise that is ahead. Am I making sense to you? He says, but with thee will I establish my covenant, and thou shalt come into the earth, thou and thy sons, and thy wife and thy son's wives will be 19. And of every living thing of all flesh, two of every soul. Shall thou bring them to the earth to keep them alive with thee? They shall be made and free. Now, 
So God told you, you there. Yeah. Once you follow the instructions, you, your children, and their wives, and their children, they will be saved. Correct? Am I, am I correct? And he said, also, animals will be saved. Bring animals. Was that what he said? He said, bring into the ark two of every, of every sort shall now bring into the ark. So, what was Noah supposed to do? Reading this verse by the instruction. What was he supposed to do? Concerning, he will build the ark, but concerning the animals, what was he supposed to do? Uh, two, two animals. What was he supposed to do? Look at it now. Look at it. Don't be afraid. Look at it. You know when we look at certain things in the scriptures and I ask you that you are thinking, and I'll be correct. Say, it, don't worry, I will tell you what happened. <laughs> what was he supposed to do? How was he supposed to get the animals into the ark? What's this word? You are afraid to just say it. Eh? Because you are thinking, how will he bring the lion and the tiger and the... That's what you are afraid of, isn't it? We are teaching scriptures, don't worry, let's enjoy the scripture. So, what was he supposed to do? Yeah. Whether I carry them, whether I drag them, and they help me. Okay, he's supposed to be giving them food. That's after they have entered. How will they get into the ark? You see, I, I like you. You are still thinking with you in my mind. Say, how will you bring the snake? Won't you have to capture it? How will you bring a tiger or a leopard? You have to capture it, won't you? But God did not say capture. Simple word. I gave him the answer here. What's the answer? Bring. So it's supposed to just go. Tiger. No, but that's what the word of God says now. You must learn. You must be a student of the word of God. That's how your life. Be real. Be real. Be re don't worry. Don't be afraid of anything. Is that okay? When you are reading the scriptures, be real. You will see that is how you will see the spirit behind the letters. When you are not trying to explain anything, don't try to explain anything away. God will give you the revelation. Huh? Okay. Don't worry. Don't worry. God said, do what? Bring them. Don't bring them. We like to complicate matters. That's our problem. That's our problem. We will complicate everything because we want to help God. Yeah. And maybe what God is now saying. God, is not, God said, bring them. Even Noah did not argue. Did he argue? No. What did he say? Just said, yes, sir. Have you? And when it's time, let me build the ark first. Then I will bring all the animals. I will bring them into the ark. Don't give yourself a protection. When God is giving you instruction, the lesson here is that don't worry yourself about how it will happen. That's what I'm about to teach you. When you are walking in faith, and your faith is emanating from an instruction. Don't be afraid of how that thing will evolve. It's not your business. That okay? I'm teaching you how to work in faith. Look, you will have to learn how to work in faith, or else you will not be a Christian. Not so, not much will happen in your life if you don't know how to work in faith. Listen, I'm teaching you this so that in the days of challenges. You are not going to be shaking. You understand. This is how to do it. And you will do it. And you will see results. And that's why we are going through examples. Go on now. Go to verse 20. He says, not only the animals that are working on the ground. Can somebody have the children? He says, also, of fowls after their kind. God has complicated it for them. Sure, you can run after the lion and still try. Oh, an eagle is now flying. Am I making sense here? Yes. Or a raven, or a dove is flying. And God said, bring them. Not only the one who, maybe we see the one working on ground. You can attempt suicide by running after the lion. 
So when the evil is fire, you know what they say? Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, I fly after the evil. Walking in faith. Confidence. And the Bible says this is the confidence these people have in the instructions of God is what they were commended for. It's why we are reading about them today. The great things that God has ordained for you, you cannot come into it cheaply. People will be angry with you. But is it true? Uh, yeah, God told you. He's going to raise a new generation of people. Yeah. You will be great achievers. Because you would have learned how to. A lot of seminars and all these, um, what do they call them now? Motivational speaking is going on out there. I tell you the truth, most of them is a waste of time. They, you will feel good when they are talking. You feel good, but there is no substance. Once you get up, you are back to your problem. You are back to where you are. Faith in the word of God, once you learn to walk in faith, will produce results in your life you will not believe it. I tell people where I'm standing today is a place where people, many people dream of in their lives and in their careers. But God has taken me there. Not because I have any background that qualifies for it. From a young age, I started learning the word of God, the principles of faith. And I did not only learn to commit it to memory. I started working in it. I will fall down, I will stand up. I will say, I, the word of God is true. After a number of years, the word of God began to produce results in my life. Beyond human thinking, beyond my background, my family background, people learn it. No, my mother is poor. My father is poor. That's all. The word of God is not poor. The faith in the word of God is not, it will change your life and destiny. People who are close to me, I don't want to digress too much. Now, see, he says, and of the fowls, after their kind, at least the birds, and of cattle, after their kind, of every creeping thing, in case you think you can leave the snake. God said, of every creeping thing of the earth, after their kind, two of every of every sort shall come unto you. You know to change, man. What has changed in that What has changed? What was the thing that God said first? Then bring them. Bring them. Now, as God saw his commitment to his instructions, this boy is he's really committed. He's doing it. He's building the ark. Actually, I knew you can't capture the man. I knew you cannot jump after the They shall come. I read the prodigious thing. Hear me. This is crucial. In this matter of faith, when you are, once you start, you won't see it before you start. Once you start following God, all that you need will come to you. The thing that has scared you the most that you think you can't achieve will of its own accord. How will it happen? It will come. That's the principle. Then. When it comes to faith, what you need is that confidence that God that has promised that has instructed you is able to make it happen. God himself changed his word. He said you shall bring them. If at the time God said you can, you shall bring them. No, no, I fall down and say, God, if not joke, stop I will bring them. He said you didn't so he said put every creepy thing. And he did not say one, he said after their time. So you want to do creepy things, you catch the anaconda. You will catch the boar constrictor. You will catch the 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 the, the, the give me those kind of animals. You will catch the cobra. You will catch those, the mamba. You will catch the mamba, the green mamba, the black mamba. You know the snakes alone will feel that in their kind. It was a very complex instruction, very dangerous assignment. As he was giving the instructions to Noah, do you think Noah was not thinking in his mind? God, which kind of thing is he? Is he an offense to follow you? Praise God. How many people have thought like that before? You are serving God and things are just going wrong. You say, God, ah, even those who are not serving you, their life is getting better. How many people have felt like that before? Don't be afraid. Stay it. 
Once God gives you an instruction, the way to make those things come to pass is he has it. He has his plan in his hand. Let me challenge you. Open your Bible. That same, look at Genesis 6. And read through. And see if you can quickly find from verse 20 down how um, Noah captured those animals. Quickly, everybody. That's how we are in this church. You must know the scriptures. Just come through quickly how those animals they got into the earth. I'm, going to, I'm giving you a bit of Bible study. We are going to do that in two minutes. Everybody, open your Bible, open your Bible. Genesis. If you can't find it in six, go to seven. I know where I'm going, I'm just pushing you in. So, where? I'm going to stop you in 10 seconds. I'll find it. Or Joe is in chapter 7. I'm counting down to 10. If you can't find it, then I'll continue. One. If you find anything, raise your hand. Two. Three. Four. Five. Six. Seven, eight, nine. Done. Give me Genesis chapter 7 verse 6. That's where we're going to start looking at now. I'm showing you faith. Hallelujah. You have to be involved now. You have to challenge your body. Okay, I'm in verse 6 now. Now look at this. And Noah was 600 years old when the flood waters was upon the earth. I've mentioned that to you before. Just to let you see that I did manufacture that video. All right, go to the next verse. Just keep going. And Noah went in, and his sons and his wife, and his sons' wives with him, into the ark because of the waters of the flood. Let's go. And of clean beasts, and of the beasts that are not clean, of fowls, and of everything that creepeth upon the earth. Nine. They all went in, in two and two, unto Noah into the ark. The male and female, as God has commanded one. You didn't see it very well. I want NIV. Who has NIV there? That's nine. Please shout, come. NIV, you can come. Come on. Come, Bridget. Come and read it for me. I can see that you are very excited. That's how the word of God is when you are getting it right. Male and female came to Noah and entered the ark as God had commanded Noah. What happened to those animals? No, talk to me. How? Okay. Have you ever thought about it before? Before today, how did Noah capture those animals? Has it ever crossed your mind before? This is what you are seeing here. The king, when it was time, they did not come before the ark was built. God gave Noah an instruction build the ark. How be it a foolish? Sounding instruction. He started against all the ridicule. Is he continued? When God saw that, yes, He said, "So you will bring animals into the ark. I will bring animals." Okay. Since you are the one giving the instruction, let me continue. At least then you have to give me the power to bring the animals. But then, when God saw His commitment, He said, "The animals will come to you." Or after the ark was built, what did the Bible say? Yeah, man. They came. That is faith. Confidence in God's instructions when you do not even know how it will come to pass. When you do not even know, you keep following Him. That is when you will achieve something great. Many people cannot have not achieved so much in their lives because they, they cut themselves short. But they are thinking, okay, this cannot work. This is what we work. God does not work like that. He will, if it's God, He will always tell you to do something that is beyond you. That's how you will, you will know He's the one. If God tells you to do something and it's what you can just sit down and finish, I doubt if it's God. If God tells you, go, do that assignment for me, and you say, hey, how will I do such a thing? I persist strongly that it's God. 
Why? That he may take the glory. When the time came, the animals of their own accord came. Listen, when God gives you a vision, the provision is in his hand. Am I making sense? This is the truth. But the provision will not be released until you start following him. That decision to follow him is called faith. It has nothing to do with your feeling. Your feeling, your mind, your brain, your body at times will be trembling and you are still walking in faith. Hallelujah. Your mind will be saying, don't do it, don't do it. Oh, are you a fool? Are you stupid? You say, but God said, yeah, but, ah, you are going to do it. God said, hey, hey. I was born in the book of 2 Corinthians. When he was speaking about himself, he said there were times that there was fear within. Eh? And there was pressure without. Listen, people will say, oh, faith is the opposite of, uh, sorry, fear, they say, is the opposite of faith. It's not correct. A lot of us have believed that over the years. I showed you in scriptures last week that it's not correct. You can be walking in faith and fear is still with you. In fact, me, I always tell fear, come along, come along. Just come along, the more the merrier. That's the way it is. You know that you cannot eliminate fear completely at times. You cannot. You cannot. So that's why when people, when some people are defining courage, they say courage is not the absence of fear. It is just like talking about faith. Faith also is not the absence of fear. There can be fear within, but your decision to move on the instructions of God is called faith. And that's what Noah demonstrated. Faith in God. Confidence in God. Confidence in his word. Confidence in his instructions. Confidence in what he has said. Once you follow his instruction, he will give you a promise. Let somebody say Amen. Let somebody say amen. amen. You see, there are people here, I perceive in my spirit, and hear me clearly. Some of you here, you have received the instructions from the Lord to do certain things. To, 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 to do a project. To step into certain things. To go to certain places. And you have been afraid. You have been afraid because your brain cannot carry it. Your brain cannot process it. God says, go and do that kind of business. You are thinking... Nobody has ever done it before. Even me, I don't have experience in that business. And you're afraid. And the enemy will be smiling. Say, don't do it. Too. You know, it will fail. That's the devil. You, just check. Lord, are you the one leading me in this matter? Moses is the one leading you. Follow him. Tell your neighbor, follow him. Follow. You didn't say it very well. Follow. No, say it very, very well. Confidently. Follow, follow him. That is how great men are doing. That's the way of great, the way to greatness. If God says go and buy land, it's also place. When the place is already habitated, big houses are there, does it not make sense that that land will appreciate more and more? Does it not make sense? That's not faith. You can see what, what is already happening. But when God says go into that jungle there and buy one acre of land, and he said, that's a waste of my money. He said, no, it's not wasting. I am telling you, go and position yourself there. He said, well, me, I would rather just put the money in the bank, let it be yielding interest. And God says, oh, see this boy, he does not know anything. Because God knows that maybe in the next two years, something is going to happen in that place. And the value is going to appreciate. If you follow him, at that time, when it seems like you are foolish, that is what is called faith. I'm explaining it to you. And that is how God leads his children. That's why the Bible is speaking in the book of Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 4. He says, the just, the righteous people, they shall live by their faith. Do you understand what I'm saying? You know you can know scriptures and not even know what it means. It says the just shall live by faith. So I'm working with the end. That you will make your life, oh, that you make something significant out of your life as a child of God. It will be by him, by following him, by being confident that once he has said it, he will make it happen. This is a crucial matter. So we look at the life of, of, of Noah, and as you read,
is further, you will see that when the waters came upon the earth, time will fail me to show you all that in detail. But when the waters came upon the earth, how many people died? Talk to me. How many people? Everybody on that, all, 100%, except Noah and his family. According to the word of God, every human being, even every animal, died. Why? Because when the water came, it came over the earth. Even the tallest mountain was covered. A minimum of 20 meters above it. Such that, that was what happened. So it was a case of, uh, what do you call that when you're underwater? That was like suffocation, but when Peter is going down inside water, what did he do? He was drowning. He drowned the world. That was what God did. Read the scripture. That's the scripture. He must be a spirit of the Bible. The whole world was drowned. That even the birds of the air, they were flying. You know, they were up there. They were flew, flew, flew. After some time, there was nowhere to land. What happened to them? They would drop. They all died. Except Noah and his family that walked that way. The matter of faith, this subject of faith, is not a feel-good subject. You need it for life, for your life. You need it to be able to step into anything that God has for you. My plan was to talk about Noah and Abraham today. But then, Noah has taken all the time. And I don't want to stretch you in the preaching to you. Now, you hear me? When God gives you an instruction, don't look to the left or to the right. Look to the one that gave you the instruction and follow it. As you follow him, things will begin to unfold. When Noah began to follow God, he did not even know how he was going to capture those animals. Thank God for what I said. I said, ah, you will have to capture them. I mean, is that not common sense? You see that with God, it's not about common sense. I'm not saying you throw away your common sense and start doing foolish things. No. When you receive an instruction from God, follow Him. Hallelujah. I give you a son. Don't worry. They are children. Children will always be children. So their mothers will handle them. Hallelujah. Someone shared a story and I found it very interesting. A man went to the village. This happened, I think, in the US. A man went to his village. You know, they also have villages. All the small, small towns. Although some of their villages are better than our best cities. <laughs> Hallelujah. I remember some years ago, I went to South Africa. We were going for a, a like a three-day meeting. So we went from one region to the other. And as we were going, we were, we were to go on road for about four hours, three and a half or four hours. So as we were going, we got to, you know, all those suburbs. And the South African people said, oh, can you see, look to the right. These are some of our villages, you know. And I looked out through the window. You know what I saw? I saw a basketball court, well cut out. I saw a well planned out football field, green grass, lush. I saw one or two buildings looking like, you know, 21st century buildings. I said, excuse me, what did you say this place is? It is one of our religions. Praise God. Anyway, so this happened. The story I'm about to tell you happened. I think it was in the US or somewhere. I remember exactly where he went. A man went back to his village. And in his village, they had this big river, true life. So, as a young boy, he used to go and stroll around the river and just, you know, and do some little fishing and everything. So, because he now went on holiday, it was already like a big, a big shot in town, working like in an investment bank, you know, any good money. So he went to the village. So he said, oh, this is our river. Let me just go there. So he went and he started strolling around, you know, on the bank of the river and just relaxing himself. Then he saw a man fish. And this is where I'm going. The man had his hook and line and he was fishing. And I think, whether because he was an expert or there were so many fishes in that river, he, was, he just kept catching different kind of fish. But you see, there was something. This man had a stick. And you see this in my hand. So imagine this is the stick. This man had a stick. Once he catches one fish, he will hold the fish and put the stick beside it. If the fish is 
smaller than the stick. Can you hear me? If what? The fish is smaller than the stick. He will throw the fish in his bucket. If the fish is longer than the stick, he will throw it back in the river. Now, does that make sense? How the I mean, if you are fishing, is it not the big ones you want? You want the big ones? Thank you, Professor Retire. Pray too much. I say, come on, sir, it's going to kill you. Praise God. He said, once boat. It's not about where. Well, at least if I have this moment, well, I can take the big ones. Boat will fetch one. Well, anyways, so if the thing is longer, he will throw it back in. So he kept going. So the guy from the village, he sat there and he was looking at him. First time, second time, third time. After some time, he could not hold himself. He said, okay, what exactly are you doing? What is the logic behind this thing? You will sweat and catch this big fish. And you now measure it with this ridiculous stick of yours. And if you have noticed that the longer ones, you throw them back. What is the logic? What exactly are you doing? He said, you might laugh a correct village man. He laughed and said, there is no logic. Actually, he said, you see this stick? This is the size of my friend now. So I measured my friend back with this stick. I put it on top. This is how long it is. Any fish that cannot fit into my friend back, what do I do? Okay. Praise God. That is how a lot of believers have been living. God gives you a great idea. You say, hey, this is bigger than me. You throw it in. God says, start that business. Hey, I can't do that. You throw it away. I can't do that. Once you throw it away, you have thrown away the fish. Faith takes hold of it. Listen. Here, you will take hold of these things. In the name of Jesus, your capacity will be enlarged. I say your capacity will be enlarged. That which your hands can handle will be enlarged. Your destiny will be fulfilled. In the name of Jesus. Some of us, God will want to push you into big things. He will say it's for those big people who have BSc, MSc, PhD. And God is saying you don't need it. I don't need your PhD to bless you. PhD is not bad. It's good. But God does not need it to bless you. How do you process the things that God brings to you? Are you like that village man with that ridiculous looking stick? You measure it. It's beyond me. I am too young. Oh, I am too unpopular. Nobody knows me. I don't have the money for it. Who lied to you? People have had great business ideas. And all they have looked for at times are just partners. They say, look, I have this idea. I need a partner. Some people have money. They have no idea. Am I making sense? Do you know that? That there are people who... I'm talking business today. I don't know why. But there are people who have money. Plenty of money. Idea. They don't get. So they have kept the money in the bank. Looking for the man with the brain. Come along and trade your own brain. Am I making sense to you? That is faith. Follow the instructions of God. Believe. Trust the promises of God. Even when it is beyond your mind what you can control. That is faith. Three important things of faith. Your confidence in God's ability that God has power. Your confidence in God's promises that when God says he will do a thing, he will do it. Your confidence in his instruction that when he says go to that place, this will happen. It will happen. Hallelujah. It will what? Happen. Instruction. I'm still tempted to talk about Abraham. Give me 10 minutes. I will close. Let me start. I will continue. Because for Abraham, there are two sides. On this side of instruction, I want to still talk about Abraham. Do I have 10 minutes? Are you sure? Yes, 
Hebrews chapter 11. Let's go back to the Hebrews 11. Let's go to verse 8. We are spoken about Noah. He followed God's instruction. His life was changed. As you follow instructions, there will always be a promise at the, at the back of it. This is how God makes people great. It's not by money return. It's not by stealing. In fact, it's not by collection. Collections are good, but God does not always work through collections. Most of the times, collections fail. How many people understand what I'm talking about? Until, you know, uh, who was that musician? I come back to all these musicians. If you not to say, well, I'm not coming down. They go, no one shot. They go, no one shot. No Listen, why you see rich people? But the man you were speaking people, forgive me. He said the rich, what the man was saying was that the rich, they do what they befriend the rich. Most of the time, the people you think are, are not connected. You go and leave them. What do you connect? I'm not connected to the end of your people. You lie. You are not connected to anything. God is lying if you weak. Send him a mail. See if he will respond. You are not connected. You can be angry for her, like, I don't care, you know. I'm telling you the truth, you are not. But there are people who call them that the phone cannot ring twice. There are people that they have things they share in common. Eh? Yes, sir. Let me know, sir. Let me show you. He says, by faith also, Abraham. You know many times when we read stories in the Old Testament, we don't realize that those people, the things they did, were done how? In faith. He said, by faith, Abraham, when he was called to go out into a place which he should, after receiving an inheritance, what happened to him? He obeyed. And he went out, not knowing whither he went. I wish I could have. Can, can we have this other second translation? I don't know if it's better. Than this NIV would have been better. But sometimes this is our challenge. Okay, we can manage. Are you still here? He says, by faith, Abraham, when he was called, who called him? Talk to me. When he was called, obeyed and went out to a place he was going to receive as an inheritance. Hear me? He went out not knowing where he was going. How easy do you think that is? To go out not knowing where he was going. Give me Genesis chapter 12 verse 1. For you to understand the story, I'm going to be very fast on this one. For you, we have looked at Noah, he obeyed God. The same thing, Abraham. God at times will give you difficult instructions. Instructions where they fear you. You'll be wondering, God. You know? One day God gave me an instruction. I said, I bind you in the name of Jesus. This cannot be God, this is the devil. Don't say you can't bind me and you won't speak. I the Lord, I speak. Get up. I said, Lord, he said, yes, yes, I'm the one. Get up now, move. I was, I was completely flabbergasted. I was like, are you sure you want? He said, be going. In fact, as you are thinking, it does be going. I've never followed him. Not once. But I also want to show you another dimension. That's why I want to show you Abraham. Look at how, the Bible, you know, in the book of Hebrews, he just gave us a summary. Am I correct? But I want to give you, show you the details in a few minutes. He says, the Lord said to Abraham, now this was when God called him, here, yeah, go out from your land, your relatives and your father's house, to the land that I will show you. See, don't be in a hurry when you read this thing. He said, did he just say, quickly go to uh, Yaba and come back? Did he say come back? Go from where? He said, go away, go out from your land. Your relatives and your father's house. He now did not say go to such a place. He said what? Go to the land that I will show you. That's why that book of Hebrews, chapter 11, he said he obeyed, not knowing where he was going. Give me that's two. I will see the promise. He gave the instruction. Immediately after I gave the instruction, he said, once you follow that instruction, what will happen? I will make you into a great nation. A lot of times, I've been in prayer meetings before. Someone will just jump in front. Say, the Lord will make me into a great nation. My 
you read it to say, the Lord will make you to a great nation. I, the Lord will bless me. The Lord will bless me. You are just wasting your life. This came out of an instruction. It is after following the instruction that the blessings will come. Christianity is not a joke. He said, once you follow the instruction, I will make you into a great nation. I will bless you. I thought somebody would say it. Yeah. Because the pastor said, this one, the, 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 yeah. Then I will bless you. Say it. Yeah. I will make your name great. Say it. Yeah. And you will be a blessing. Say it. Yeah. Yeah. Pastor, I will bless those who bless you. Yeah. I will cause those who you with content. Yeah. And all the peoples of the earth will be blessed through you. Yeah. That's four. So, Abraham went and the Lord had told him. You know what we say about that? Abraham has been a son. How did Abraham become your father? This is how he became your father. He went, following God's instruction, not knowing where he was going. Can you get up and go to a place not knowing where you're going? A lot of us cannot do it. But once you follow God's instructions, even when you don't know where you are going, ah, God is saying, yes. I found another one. Because there are people who work in faith and very few. God is always looking for them. Once you also receive instruction and you get up against all odds and you start following it, God rejoices. God has an obsession. It's for those who will believe it. Once you get up and start following him, he says, yes! Found another one. I will show the world what I do with people who follow me. God will do marvelous things with you. Amen! In the name of Jesus. Amen. But as I round up, go back to that Hebrews chapter 11. But as I round up, go to verse 9. As I round up, I want to show you at times what happens. When you start taking the first set of steps, go to verse 8. Verse 8. So, still talking about Abraham. He said, By faith, Abraham, when he was called to go out into a place which he should after receive as a inheritance, he obeyed and he went out, not knowing where. Can I have the other translation? Not knowing where he was going. He did not know where he was going. Now, verse 9. By faith, he stayed as a foreigner in the land of promise. Hmm. Hmm. By faith. You know he left by faith. When he now got to the land of promise, everything just started working. They just gave him 10 acres of land. They just built houses for him. And they just gave him farmlands. And money began to flow. You know the way our person, and money began to flow. And great things began to happen. No! He said, I still watching by that faith. He got there. He seemed as if <laughs> have I not made a mistake. Hallelujah. So by faith, he stayed as a foreigner in the land of promise. How? Living in tents with Isaac and Jacob, co-heirs of the same promise. I'm going to stop here today. So when he got to the land of promise, by faith, he followed God. By faith, he entered the land of promise. But things didn't yield to him immediately. They didn't hand the land over to him immediately. But what happened? The Bible says, still trusting God. God is sent me there. I have confidence in you. I have, you know that song? I have confidence in you. Jesus. I have confidence in you. Say. I have confidence in you. Anytime, anywhere, I have confidence in you. Jehovah. Now listen to me. He was there. Nobody gave him any land. Nobody gave him anything. But he had confidence in you. It took him time. To step now fully into the promise. But he stayed there. The Bible said he did not even have a house. 
Yet he followed God there. When he got there, they didn't deliver houses and lavish to him. The Bible said he started living where? Tents. He said, God has sent me here and said, Whatever we have to now receive, because God has promised me this one. After a number of years of living in tent, the land yielded to him. Today, the land of Israel, this was how it was taken from the beginning. Listen, there is something great in your lineage. You must be the one with gold, hot, fire filled eyes to step into it for them. Am I making sense? You must be the one. You must get up. You must follow it. You must receive instructions from God and follow it. And as you follow it, yet generations to come in your family, they will say, We have one patriarch. His name was Johnson. Oh my God, that man dared big things. Oh, that man walked in faith. The faith of God was burning in his heart. This was why he was able to take us through all this. Even when it seemed like it was not going to happen. That is how to walk in faith. By faith, they did all these things. Their time has passed. But they pleased God. God commanded them. It's your own turn now. It's your own turn now. Are you going to sit there and complain all the days of your life? My uncle did not help me. My father has forgotten me. My mother did not give me money. It's a waste of time. Am I making sense to you? Are you going to sit there all the days of your life whining and crying and complaining? Or are you going to rise up and say, Lord, what is the instruction? How should I do? Where should I put my foot? And you start putting your feet there and your life will take it on. This is the beginning of a new day in your life. Amen. It's a good event to me. Amen. It's the beginning. Some people say, oh, but I'm young. Do you know as a student, you can work in faith? Even in your academics, you can work in faith. In your business, you can work in faith. In your career, you can work in faith. In your health, you can work in faith. That is the truth. That is what, why we're here. That is why you are receiving this word. So that you will rise up and hold your destiny by the truth. And say, I'm not going to let you go. I'm going to become all God has destined me to be. Listen, once you start stepping out, it might not seem like it. But it will become it as you continue to be faithful. I want you to pray. Lord, set me on fire. That's going to be our prayer today. I don't want to be a weak believer. I want to be, I don't want to be a useless believer. I don't want to be one of those believers who will make no mark on the sand of time. I must make a mark on the sand of time. I must fulfill God's plan and God's purpose. Oh, remind me no Lord, a new fire in my heart, oh my God. Hello, she brought a little bit of a You are not praying. Lord, set my heart on fire. Let faith begin to burn in my heart. Oh God, set my heart on fire for you. For you. Get up, get up, get up, and pray. 
You will bless me in return in the name of Jesus. My sources will not run dry. Pray for healing streams that the Lord will bless us with more than enough to do the work of ministry in the name of Jesus. I will say, if the cattle upon a thousand eagles belong to our God, our God is the God of, of wealth. He's a wealthy God. He's the one who laid the streets of his of, of, of the heavens with gold. It, it, it's not me to go to bless us. Say, Father, you will bless me in return. We will not lack in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. Lord, we thank you for your opening our hands today. We pray that you accept it as a token of our love, gratitude, and honor to you in the name of Jesus. Every hand that gives to you today, you will bless. As many that who do not genuinely do not have today, we will pray you will bless them. And anytime there is an opportunity to give to you, they will give you in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father, because even those who are giving their thanks in the blessing in return, you will give to the brothers when they are saved in the name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you because as a church, we are blessed in the name of Jesus. We lack nothing in resources and men, in everything we require to do the work of ministry. We will not lack in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. For in Jesus' name, we pray.